Summary of Uglies by Scott Westerfeld Tally, who is 15 years old, is feeling downhearted as she looks at the sunset, which is the same shade of pink as cat puke. Since Paris, Tally's best friend, had his pretty surgery a few months ago, nothing has looked pretty. Tally sneaks across the bridge from Uglyville, where she and other ugly people live, to New Pretty Town, where all the pretty people live at night. Pretty people have big lips and eyes that are identical on both sides of their faces. She can't wait to be pretty too. He doesn't like seeing her when she finds Paris. He tells Tally that the scar on his hand from their blood pact to always be together is gone because he had surgery and got new skin. He then takes her to the roof so she can use a bungee jacket to jump off the building. Before Tally's surgery, Paris makes her promise not to cause too much problems. Back by the river, Tally meets Shay, an ugly girl who is also waiting to cross back to Uglyville. The two girls become fast friends. Shay shows Tally how to ride a scooter. Unlike most uglies, Shay makes them use their real names instead of mean nicknames that describe their looks. The girls find out that they both have birthdays on the same day. This means that they will both have plastic surgery at the same time. Tally shows Shay her morphos one afternoon. These are pictures of what Tally might look like as a pretty people. Shay doesn't want Tally to make a morpho of her because she has never done it before. She won't listen to Tally when she says that the only way to make society fair is to do pretty surgery. Soon after, Shay talks Tally into going on a ride at night to the rusty ruins, which are the remains of a rusty city. When they get to the ruins, Shay shows Tally what she calls a roller coaster and tells her they can board on it. Shay then rides his bike to the top of a building and sets off a sparkler. She says it's definitely a sign. She wants to find a boy named David who is ugly and doesn't live in the city. After a while, Tally and Shay argue about how important it is to look good. Tally says Shay doesn't want to grow up, but Shay is adamant that they've been taught to think they're ugly. Before their birthday, the girls don't talk. Shay sneaks into Tally's room and tells her she's meeting David in the smoke, a place where no one ever gets pretty surgery. Because she really wants to be pretty, Tally won't go with Shay. Before Shay leaves, she tells Tally not to tell anyone and gives her handwritten, secret instructions in case Tally wants to follow them. Tally's 16th birthday is at the hospital, where she waits for an hour until a middle-aged woman who looks mean and scary comes to get her. He takes Tally to a group of rundown buildings and helps her meet Dr. Cable, a mean woman. She tells Dr. Cable that this place is called Special Circumstances and asks about Shay and the smoke. Special Circumstances is like a secret police force, and they need to crack down on people who live outside of towns because they want to steal ugly things. Tally says she has never met anyone from outside of towns and that she can't help, but Dr. Cable tells her that she won't look pretty until she does what he says. Tally goes back to her Uglyville dorm room. She will soon be seeing her folks, Sol and Ellie. Ellie keeps telling Tally that she has to work with special circumstances, and Tally doesn't feel safe with her parents for the first time. Tally boards at night and sleeps during the day for the next few days. She goes back to her room in the morning and finds Paris there. So that Tally can keep her promise to always be with him, he makes her give up Shay. Tally sends Dr. Cable a message, happy and upset at the same time. Although Tally tells Dr. Cable everything she knows about David and the smoke, she doesn't know anything more than their team does. Dr. Cable gives Tally survival gear and a heart-shaped collar with a tracking device. She also tells Tally that she has to go to the smoke and let them know where she is. Tally starts her trip that night by following Shay's secret song. The roller coaster in the rusty ruins is fun for her. She also finds train lines that lead to the sea and crosses chasms at the coast. She goes upstream along a river and chooses to take a bath in it. The water is exciting, but Tally is startled when a huge, scary plane flies by. Tally gets to fields of white flowers the next day. When Tally wakes up, the field is on fire. Pretty girls in masks save her and put her in a plane. 
Tonk, one of the pretty ones, says that they burn the white tiger orchid flowers because the Rusties made them spread. Because the flowers are so popular, they kill everything in their path and leave a wasteland in their wake. They leave Tally on a hill, and Shay and two other Smokies show up the next morning. David is one of them. He is an older, rough boy. There is a tracking device on Tally's scooter, so he takes it off and brings the group back to the smoke. People who live in the Smokies burn wood and cut down trees, and none of them are pretty. When Shay introduces Tally to the boss, the 40-year-old ugly library manager, Tally is very upset. She can hardly stand to look at him because he's so old and wrinkled. Shay shows Tally the boss's collection of magazines from the rusty era. These magazines have pictures of ugly people showing off their disgustingly broken bodies. David, Shay, and Tally work together that afternoon to pull up train tracks. They need the metal to make paths for their hoverboards. David takes Tally up the lines to show her a tunnel that has caved in. He tells them that he wasn't running away because he was born in the smoke. His parents used to be doctors, but they left the city and changed their jobs. Tally doesn't know if she should talk to Dr. Cable or not. She wishes she had called him when she had the chance. She now knows that this is David's house and that destroying it would be terrible. Tate stays in the smoke for a few weeks. Shay sees Tally's pendant and says that she thinks Tally got a boyfriend the week before her birthday. Tally doesn't argue with Shay. Tally likes living in the smoke. She gets used to working with wood, people of different shapes and sizes, and the hard work. David gives Tally a pair of gloves he made one morning as they hoverboard to the train tracks. That day at work, Tally meets a boy named Croy, who tells her that he thinks she's a spy. Things get even worse for Tally when Shay yells at her during lunch that she is stealing David. Since Tally agrees to talk to David, she does what he asks and goes outside that night. When David tells Tally that he admires her for being true to Shay, she doesn't say anything. She didn't think it was possible because David is ugly, but Tally does like him. David knows Tally doesn't want to live in the smoke, but he wants her to meet his parents first. David takes Tally to his parents' house and tells her about his mom, Maddie, and dad, AZ. When they were young, they did study on how to make the pretty process safer, and they tell Tally about it. AZ found that brain lesions were a side effect of the anesthesia. But as they looked into it further, they found that most pretty people didn't have the lesions, but people whose jobs needed them to make decisions did. Marty and AZ didn't have them because they were doctors. David says that the scars make pretty people mild and dull because they change the way they think. According to Maddie, special circumstances stepped in before she and AZ could come up with a fix on their own. However, they know there is a cure because all pretty girls start out with sores. This helps Tally understand how important the smoke is. David tells Tally that he thinks she's pretty as they walk home. Tally is shocked, she didn't think it was possible to like someone who looks bad. She does, however, kiss David, and it feels real and important. Tally suddenly feels very happy and throws Dr. Cable's pendant into the fire. She makes up her mind to stay in the smoke and deal with the consequences of taking David from Shay. The next morning, when Tally wakes up, she finds that special circumstances have broken into the smoke. She sneaks out, but the boss won't let her try to sneak a duffel bag full of rusty magazines out of the smoke because she's not wearing shoes. Tally is caught by a special and put in the rabbit pen with other Smokies. As soon as Shay gets to the pen, the specials look into Tally's eye, recognize her, and take her to Dr. Cable. Dr. Cable is mad that Tally took so long. He tells her that the pendant would have worked if it was broken and then asks where it is. Because Tally said she hid it on a roof, Dr. Cable sends a special out with her to get it. Tally tricks the special into letting her off the hook by cutting her chains and letting her get close to a scooter, which lets her get away. She rides her hoverboard to the train cave barefoot and finds David there. They stay hidden all night, and in the morning, they find that the specials set fire to the smoke. Then they go to Maddie and AZ's house, but find that they're not there. 
Tally is obviously guilty, but she argues that they have to save everyone. She makes up her mind to tell David the truth after things are better. David takes something from his parents' stash of emergency gear and sets out with Tally the next night. They're on the road for two weeks at night. After that, they sneak into the city and look down into the special services complex. David is told by Tally that they can't touch the ground or hoverboard over the fence because both are sensors. However, they can steal bungee jackets and jump onto a roof. When they get back to the ruins after stealing coats, they find three ugly people looking for David. Their names are Susie, N, and Dex. The ugly people agree to help David and Tally pull off their trick. A message that says the smoke lives is sent over New Pretty Town by the ugly people the next night. When Tally and David see this, they sneak into the special services property, break into the biggest building, and get into the elevator shaft. They are shocked to find Dr. Cable and a pretty Shay on the bottom floor. They are, however, ahead in terms of surprise because David hits Dr. Cable over the head and knocks her out. Tally gets Shay back to the city, and she thanks her for it while David frees the other Smokies. She loves looking good. Tally is very upset. She takes the group out of the building, and when David asks her where AZ is, she tells him he's dead. The Smokies and Shay get together at the Rusty Ruins the next day. David and Maddie tell her that Maddie stole the information she needs to make a fix. For 20 days, she works while Tally and the other Smokies tell everyone that the pretty surgery changes people's minds. She finally tells Shay to take the pills and sits her down. Shay says no because she's content, loves looking good, and doesn't want to feel jealous or paranoid. Maddie won't let Tally sneak Shay the pills, which makes Tally very angry. Maddie says that if they did that, they would be just as bad as the city government, which did the surgery on Shay without her approval. David also says that AZ died because he was a victim of Dr. Cable's test where he changed people's memories. As soon as Maddie says again that they need a willing test subject, Tally steps forward. David finds out the truth, she was a spy who gave away the smoke. She then tells David that she will go to the city to get her surgery and then come back to test the pills. Maddie agrees, but before Tally and Shay go back to the city, she makes her write down that she agrees. Tally has mixed feelings. She wants to change Shay back into the person she knows Shay wanted to be, but she knows that Shay will hate her for betraying the smoke. When Tally and Shay meet a guard, Tally tells him her name and says she wants to look good. About the author. Westerfeld was born in Dallas, Texas. He moved across the U.S. as a child since his father was a computer programmer who worked on Apollo missions, Boeing, and submarines. Westerfeld had many jobs after graduating from Vassar. He worked in a workshop making lead soldiers, as a software designer, as an author of textbooks, and as a ghostwriter. His first book came out in 1997, but it wasn't until Evolution's Darling came out in 2000 that his books started to get a lot of attention and win big awards. Beginning in 2004, he wrote for teens and young adults. The following year, Uglies gave him his big break. People who like Westerfeld's Uglies and Leviathan books can find him online and on social media sites all the time. His wife and he live in New York and Australia. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.